This is Mac OS Ken. A look at iPhone 13 and iPad mini orders, an unsurprising disappointment in Russia, and more trophies for Apple TV+. Plus. It is Monday, the 20th of September, 2021. I'm Ken Ray, and this is news from Mac OS Ken. Brought to you by yours truly and sponsored by the Nebbia by Moen Spa Shower. Save 10% on Nebbia products by using code MacOSCAN at nebbia.com slash MacOSCAN. This show is also sponsored by Headspace. Meditation made simple. It's simple because of the app. It goes where you do and is filled with meditations for focus, for mindfulness, even for better sleep. Mindfulness and meditation have become more important for me with the Headspace app. Initially, I was using the SOS meditations. Those are like quick hits to deal with high-intensity moments. From there, I moved to the basics courses. Three of those meant to give you tools you can use for a lifetime meditation practice. And it was somewhere in there that it clicked. I started being more present for meals and activities, not wolfing down food while doom scrolling, paying attention to what I was eating and doing and where I was, not just at mealtime, but all times of the day. No, everything is not perfect now, but things feel better. You deserve to feel happier. And Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash macOSCan. That's headspace.com slash macOSCan for a free one-month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered. Right now, head to headspace.com slash macOSCan today. Apple employees are not required to get vaccinated, but they will be required to shove more things up their nose if they don't. Engadget says folks who work for Apple in stores or offices who have not been vaccinated against COVID-19 will have to be tested more often than employees who have been vaccinated. Google, Facebook, and a number of other tech companies are requiring vaccination before returning to work at work. At this point, Apple has not put in place such a requirement, and Gadget says the increased testing policy is the latest effort by Apple to push its employees to get inoculated against the coronavirus, which, okay, seems possible, though it could also be that the company is trying to slow the spread of the virus by testing the people most likely to spread it. The company has confirmed the increased testing for unvaccinated employees to the site Protocol, Otherwise, Apple does not seem to have offered comment on the move. Right, let's get to the iPhone. Friday was iPhone pre-order day. 5, 6, 7, 8 a.m. West Coast to East, Apple opened pre-orders for the iPhone 13s, Mini, all the way through Pro Max. Seems to have gone well for most, though some people queued up with one of Apple's payment methods hit on a bit of trouble. Mac Rumors ran a report Friday saying some would-be buyers experienced issues when attempting to complete their purchase with an Apple Card or Apple Pay. Twitter was apparently littered with screenshots of errors with messages like, there was a problem with the card details you entered, or something went wrong. What went wrong? Something. Apple has not said, though it did acknowledge the issue in its system status page, for 4 hours and 36 minutes, starting at 5, 6, 7, 8, the Cupertino company said some Apple Card customers were not able to make iPhone upgrade program purchases. Please try your purchase again. Worth noting, the only place I've seen say that there was a problem with Apple Pay in general versus Apple Card specifically is that Mac Rumors piece. Other stories I've read and Apple System status page only mention Apple Card. When you're trying to pre-order a hot ticket item, four and a half hours is a while to wait, especially when you've got no clue how long a fix will take. Sensibly, a lot of people had already tried their purchase again, switching to a different payment method, 
Neat that they would be able to get their phones, though they assume that that would mean missing out on the 3% daily cash offered through Apple Card. Turns out, they won't. A piece from Apple Insider says Apple and its banking partner Goldman Sachs will honor Apple Card's cashback incentive for customers who used a different card to bypass the iPhone upgrade program situation. The report goes on to say those impacted by the issue will be sent an email containing details on how to obtain the benefit that can run close to $55 for iPhone upgrade program payments on a 1TB iPhone 13 Pro Max. While not yet confirmed, Apple Card holders might have to change their credit card on file with Citizen Bank, the financial institution handling loans for the iPhone upgrade program. If you were wondering how widespread these issues were, you get to keep right on wondering. Though Apple has acknowledged the issue, it has not said how many people were affected. Glancing at a Slack channel I'm in for another podcast, a few people there had the Apple Card issue. Each switched to a different payment method and each is getting their iPhone on Friday. One other person in that Slack channel had no issue going through the pre-order process using their Apple Card bright and early Friday morning. Round these parts, my special lady friend used her Apple Card to order her iPhone going through the pre-order process. The only issue she had was a bit of a lag. While I got in right as pre-order started, her Apple Store app wouldn't let her in until 5 or 10 minutes later. I was not using Apple Card. I was using Apple Pay. And I did have a problem, but it was totally self-inflicted. It seems the last thing I had delivered using Apple Pay was something I ordered from my mother. I know Apple knows where I live, so it wasn't until I had confirmed the purchase that I realized i just sent my iPhone 13 to my mom's house. I did, of course, freak out. Then I hit the chat icon at the bottom of the Apple Store app's screen, and a very friendly, very helpful Apple support chat person had me sorted in less than 10 minutes. My Marigold case will be here Wednesday, my blue iPhone 13 will be here Friday, and all will be right with the... Well, I'll have a case and a phone anyway. As has become a tradition this time of year, I've gone through Apple's site and checked how easy or difficult it would be to get the phone I would want in Apple's various SKUs. As of Sunday night, a carrier unlocked iPhone 13 Pro Blue 128GB shows delivery between the 19th of October and the 26th of October. The same was true for an iPhone 13 Pro Max with the same specs. One big difference there, I could opt to pick up a pre-ordered iPhone 13 Pro Max with those specifications at my local Apple store this Friday, the 24th of September. On the iPhone 13 mini, going blue, 128GB carrier unlocked yielded a delivery between the 8th of October and the 13th. That one I could also pre-order and pick up this Friday at my local Apple store. Finally, looking at a blue, unlocked 128GB iPhone 13 shows delivery between the 5th of October and the 7th. And once again, that phone's available to pre-order and pick up at my local Apple store this Friday, the 24th of September. That said, a friend in LA was saying Friday that he couldn't find Friday pickup at any Apple store in the City of Angels, so they're not all gone, but they're not all over the place either. Poke around, see what you find, and feel free to share. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. When your iPhone is delivered without the usual plastic wrap, don't freak out. iLounge says Apple's done with that, leaving off the plastic as part of its ongoing pursuit to leave the planet better than it found it. According to iLounge, Apple says the removal of plastic wrap can save 600 metric tons from appearing in landfills. iLounge says the company is committed to remove the plastic wrap from all of its packaging by 2025. I will confess I got so caught up in new iPhone day, I kind of forgot that Apple put a couple of new iPads on pre-order last week as well. 
One of those is in really short supply. iMore ran a piece Sunday saying that the wait for an iPad mini has already slipped to as late as early November. When they posted their piece Sunday evening, iMore said the new iPad mini in space gray with the 64 gigabyte and Wi-Fi only configuration, for example, is already pushed out to delivery dates between the 19th of October and the 2nd of November. Poking my head in the store, the same was true for a 256 gigabyte iPad mini, Wi-Fi only in purple and starlight and space gray. I could still get a pink one delivered this Friday, though, so, you know, look for the iPad mini you want and see. Maybe you want one that nobody else does. Apple also put the new entry-level iPad on pre-order last week. A quick check on those shows them as readily available for delivery or pickup this Friday, the 24th of September. More options internationally for Apple Care Plus. I told you last week that Apple had expanded the version of Apple Care Plus for loss and theft to Australia and the UK. Now a piece from Mac Rumors has renewable Apple Care Plus coverage arriving in France, Italy, and Spain for Apple Watch, iPad, and iPhone. Folks with those devices in covered countries who paid the lump sum for a set period for Apple Care Plus coverage can now extend the coverage by paying a monthly fee, according to the report. In addition to the new three, countries eligible for the monthly extensions include Australia, Canada, Germany, Japan, the UK, and the US. The piece points out that that's only for the phone, the tablet, and the wearable. Currently, renewable coverage for the Mac is only available in the States. If you're looking forward to AirPods Pro or AirPods Max getting Find My support, take comfort in having something to look forward to for longer. While such support hadn't been expected with today's scheduled release of iOS 15, a change over the weekend makes that seem unlikely. Mac Rumors ran a report Sunday evening saying such support is probably weeks away. According to the piece, Apple recently updated its iOS 15 features page to indicate that Find My network support for AirPods Pro and AirPods Max has been delayed until later this fall, implying that the feature will not be available with the initial release of iOS 15. The feature joins a list of upcoming functions that, for the time being, remain upcoming. Mac Rumors says several other iOS 15 features will not be available until later this year, such as SharePlay, legacy contacts, the ability to add a driver's license or state ID to the wallet app, and more. More news in a moment, but first I am very happy to welcome a new sponsor to this show, the Nebbia by Moen Spa Shower. This is Nebbia's most advanced shower yet, with twice the coverage and half the water usage of standard shower heads. Despite using 45% less water, its spray is 81% more powerful than the competition. I'll be telling you some of the Nebbia story this week, but let me tell you a story from my house. There's a kid that lives here, and she can be particular. I wasn't sure what she would think of the change. After her first shower with Nebbia, she said the water was so warm and so everywhere, she wanted to give it a hug. Yes, it is that good. The Nebbia by Moen shower starts at just $199, and there is a special deal for macOS Ken listeners. The first 100 people to use the code macOSCAN at nebbia.com slash macOSCAN will get 10% off all Nebbia products. Nebbia deals like this don't happen often, so now is an excellent time to check them out. N-E-B-I-A, that's nebbia.com slash macOSCan to see what they have to offer. The first 100 people to use the code macOSCan at checkout will save 10% on all Nebbia products again. That's nebbia.com slash macOSCan 
and use that code MACOSCAN to save 10%. Apple has made some moves in Russia that many will find disappointing, though none should find surprising. First, a piece from CNET says both Apple and Google pulled the Smart Voting app, also known as the Navalny app, from their respective app stores on Friday. According to the report, that app was designed to consolidate the opposition vote in each of Russia's 225 electoral districts, according to the New York Times. It reportedly let people enter their address and would then offer up candidates to vote for. The idea behind the protest vote was to get politicians not approved by the Kremlin in the parliament, whether or not people agreed with an individual candidate's views. Sort of amazing that it took the Silicon Valley giants as long as it did to nix the app. Authorities started calling for its removal in the middle of August. Still, Friday was a timely day for opposition to the opposition, Russian elections were set to run from last Friday, the day of the app's removal, through Sunday. Shutting down the app was reportedly only part of the Kremlin's pre-election censorship. CNET says other moves included demanding keywords associated with the opposition be blocked from Google and Russian search site Yandex. Platforms like Twitter and Facebook also face pressure to purge content the Kremlin disapproves of. Neither Apple nor Google offered comment for the CNET piece. Disappointment minus surprise number two. It looks like the private relay and Apple updates won't be a thing for Russians. If you don't remember what that one is, a piece from the Next Web explained it around WWDC, saying private relay encrypts traffic between Safari and your DNS resolver when you look up websites. Apple will maintain its own server where it'll separate your IP from your request and send a new one to the DNS resolver, which will only reveal your region. That way, the piece said, your internet provider won't be able to know what sites you're visiting and the DNS host can't know your exact location. That sounds like something an authoritarian government would be fine with. Except for the part where they would be fine with it. A piece from Apple Insider cites reports from readers who say references to private relay have been removed from sites associated with Russia. Previously, the report says Apple had revealed that the privacy feature would not be available in Belarus, China, Colombia, Egypt, Kazakhstan, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Turkmenistan, Uganda, and the Philippines because of local regulations. The greatest science fiction work of all time is finally coming to the screen. So says the press release for Dune. Well, you'd be forgiven for thinking so, but Apple TV Plus can probably also make that claim for Foundation. And they have. The Mac Observer brought a new post to my attention over the weekend. The Cupertino streamer has posted a first look at its TV adaptation of the Isaac Asimov epic on YouTube. Based on Asimov's award-winning novels, the blurb for the show says Foundation chronicles a band of exiles on their monumental journey to save humanity and rebuild civilization amid the fall of the Galactic Empire. Jared Harris and Lee Pace lead the cast, the show premieres this Friday, the 24th of September, on Apple TV+. Plus. In the meantime, you can catch the first look on YouTube. And finally today, a phrase we may not hear for a while. Congratulations once again to the Apple TV Plus hit, Ted Lasso. The last of this year's Emmy Awards were presented Sunday night. According to a tally from CNET, Team Lasso took home four... Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy Series went to Hannah Waddingham. She plays boss lady Rebecca Welton. Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series went to Brett Goldstein. He's there. He's there. Yes, he plays Roy Kent. Best Lead Actor in a Comedy Series went to Jason Sudeikis. He plays Ted Lasso. And, of course, Ted Lasso itself won for Best Comedy Series. Apple's press release on that last win says... It made Apple the first streaming service to secure an Emmy Award and a program category in only its second year of eligibility. 
Across the many days of this year's Emmys, Apple TV Plus earned 11 trophies, seven for Ted Lasso alone. Congratulations, everybody. Sleep well. Award season starts again in 30 minutes. Mac OS Can, brought to you by me and sponsored by Headspace. Meditation made simple. Get a free one-month trial at headspace.com slash macOSCan. This show is also sponsored by Nebbia. Save 10% on Nebbia products by using code macOSCan at N-E-B-I-A nebbia.com slash macOSCan. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media, online at backbeatmedia.com. You can reach me a couple of ways. Info at macOSCan.com or call 716-780-4080. Until next time, that is news from macOS Ken. I'm Ken Ray. Ciao.